If we look at the biggest tech companies in the world in the top 50 list, we can see many well-known names in the tech industry, such as American companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Google, as well as Asian tech giants like Tencent, TSMC, and Alibaba. Two continents here are well represented, North America and Asia. Interestingly, we don't see any European companies in the top 10. In fact, in the top 50 list, shockingly, there are only three European tech companies. This has not always been the case. There have historically been European tech giants like the Finnish company Nokia, which was the largest maker of cell phones from 1998 to 2012. How can it be that the most developed part of the world is falling behind in technology today? What on earth happened to Europe? Despite being home to some of the world's most renowned scientific and technological minds, Europe has struggled to keep pace with the United States and Asia in the global tech race. As technology continues to shape our lives, it is important to analyze the reasons behind Europe's lag in the tech industry. The top five tech companies in the United States, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, and Facebook boast a staggering combined market capitalization of over $7.5 trillion. China's tech giants Alibaba, Tencent, Meituan, JD.com, and Baidu command an equally impressive market cap, which collectively surpasses $1.5 trillion. In stark contrast, Europe's top tech companies, SAP, Accenture, ASML, Schneider Electric, and Dassault struggle to reach a combined market cap of $700 billion, falling significantly short of their American and Chinese counterparts. The disparity in market capitalization is a clear indicator of the difference in the scale and impact of tech companies hailing from these regions. Apart from that, while the US and China are fighting and competing like it's a world tech war in chip manufacturing, 5G technology, electronics, and of course artificial intelligence, Europe is nowhere to be seen. The question that arises then is, why has Europe failed to produce tech giants that can rival those in the United States and China? And why despite being developed and economically prosperous, it's falling behind in technology? Europe's early role in the tech industry was illustrious with the continent being home to some of the most groundbreaking innovations in history. For instance, in 1989, the World Wide Web was invented by Sir Tim Berners-Lee, a British computer scientist. Similarly, the foundations of modern computing were laid by British mathematician and computer scientist Alan Turing, who is widely recognized for his pioneering work during World War II. However, key historical turning points contributed to Europe's current position in the tech industry. The 20th century saw the United States surge ahead, fueled by an influx of European talent fleeing war-torn countries and a conducive environment for innovation. For instance, the creation of Silicon Valley in California, which is now synonymous with technological prowess, attracted the brightest minds from around the world. For example, the CEOs of the biggest tech companies in the US like Microsoft, Google, IBM, FedEx, Adobe are all born in India and came to the US as immigrants. Meanwhile, Asia, particularly China, focused on manufacturing and hardware development, eventually evolving into an innovation hub. The region successfully leveraged its massive population and economic growth to foster a thriving technology ecosystem. For example, if you have an idea for manufacturing some tech device you have been thinking about, you can immediately start mass manufacturing the product as the climate in a city like Shenzhen in China is designed in a way that there's rent and assembly line facilities ready to manufacture any electronics. Additionally, the dot-com bubble of the late 1990s and early 2000s, for instance, saw the rapid growth of American tech companies while European companies were left behind due to a lack of investment and infrastructure. In comparison, the United States and Asia have capitalized on their early technological advancements, fostering the growth of tech giants such as Google, Apple, and Alibaba. These companies have managed to expand rapidly, gaining a significant market share and reinforcing their dominance in the global tech industry. The European market, with its rich tapestry of languages, cultures, and regulatory frameworks is both a source of strength and a barrier to growth for tech startups. On one hand, this diversity fosters innovation and unique ideas, but on the other, it hinders the development of a unified tech ecosystem. 
Imagine a scenario where a tech startup based in Berlin seeks to expand to Madrid, Paris, and Rome. The company would face an array of challenges, from language barriers and cultural differences to distinct legal systems and tax regulations. These hurdles slow down the expansion process and increase costs, making it difficult for European startups to scale rapidly and compete with their American and Asian counterparts. In contrast, the United States enjoys a largely homogenous market with English as the common language and a uniform legal and regulatory landscape. This enables American startups to scale efficiently, reaching a vast consumer base of over 330 million people. Similarly, China's market, with a population exceeding 1.4 billion, offers a massive opportunity for tech companies to grow and thrive, despite regional differences in language and culture. An example that illustrates the impact of fragmentation on European tech startups is the case of Spotify, the Swedish music streaming giant. Despite being an industry leader, Spotify faced numerous challenges when expanding across Europe, including licensing negotiations with music labels and navigating varying copyright laws. This slowed down the company's European expansion, whereas in the United States, it could grow exponentially within a single unified market. I would go as far as to say, if there wasn't for the US, Spotify would die. Thanks to the US, Spotify was saved from doom. The statistics further emphasize the impact of fragmentation on European tech companies. According to the European Startup Monitor, only 8% of European startups have successfully expanded to more than three countries. In contrast, 47% of startups in the United States have reached the same level of expansion. The fragmented European market, with its diverse languages, cultures, and regulations, poses significant challenges for tech startups seeking to scale rapidly. This starkly contrasts with the unified market structures in the United States and Asia, which enable a more conducive environment for the growth and expansion of tech companies. When it comes to tech education, Europe is home to numerous world-class universities and institutions renowned for their high-quality education in technology and computer sciences. Institutions like ETH Zurich, EPFL, and the University of Oxford have produced brilliant minds who have contributed significantly to the global tech landscape. However, despite the strong foundation in education, Europe faces a persistent challenge, the brain drain phenomenon. The brain drain refers to the emigration of highly skilled and educated individuals from their home countries to other regions, often in pursuit of better opportunities and career prospects. In Europe's case, many tech talents are drawn to the allure of Silicon Valley and other thriving tech hubs in the United States and Asia, where they find lucrative job offers, abundant funding, and the chance to work with industry-leading companies. Take the example of DeepMind a UK-based artificial intelligence company acquired by Google in 2014. Despite being founded in London and enjoying initial success, the company's most groundbreaking work, such as the development of the AI system AlphaGo, took place under Google's umbrella. And now DeepMind and Google Brain have merged into a single company, effectively making it an American company and diverting the benefits of the innovation away from Europe. The European Commission estimates that approximately 15% of highly skilled European professionals have migrated to other regions, mainly to the United States. This exodus of talent has left a gap in the European tech ecosystem, further hampering the growth and development of its tech industry. To combat the brain drain and retain skilled professionals, European countries have initiated programs and incentives to foster a more attractive environment for tech talents. Examples include the French Tech Visa, which offers a streamlined process for international tech professionals, and the establishment of tech hubs like Station F in Paris and Factory Berlin in Germany. Despite these efforts, the brain drain continues to pose a significant challenge to Europe's tech industry. The loss of top talent to other regions not only stifles the growth of European tech startups, but also limits the region's ability to cultivate the next generation of tech giants that can compete on a global scale. Funding and investment opportunities are vital for the growth and success of tech companies. A significant factor contributing to this disparity is Europe's more risk-averse culture, which is evident in the examples of Airbus and Nokia. Airbus, facing competition from Boeing, opted for a safer iteration of their existing A330 airliner instead of developing an all-new design. This risk aversion 
ultimately backfired, with major customers demanding a completely new design. Similarly, Nokia's reluctance to embrace new technologies and adopt Google's Android operating system led to a dramatic decline in market share, from 49.4% in 2007 to just 3.1% in 2013. In contrast, Silicon Valley is renowned for its entrepreneurial spirit and thriving ecosystem of venture capitalists, tech professionals, and entrepreneurs. Europe's more cautious attitude, coupled with its preference for safer careers, such as investment banking, law, and medicine, has resulted in less established networks and fewer investment opportunities. This cultural divide, which favors communitarian attitudes over the pioneering spirit found in the US, has hindered the growth of Europe's startup culture. The impact of this risk-averse culture is reflected in the venture capital landscape. European startups receive significantly less funding compared to their US and Asian counterparts. For instance, in 2020, European tech startups attracted $41 billion in venture capital, while US startups received a staggering $156 billion. This funding gap makes it challenging for European tech companies to scale, innovate, and compete globally. The scarcity of venture capital funding in Europe often pushes companies to seek acquisitions by non-European firms, as they can provide the resources necessary for growth. A prime example is Arm Holdings, a British company whose chip designs power 95% of the world's smartphones. In 2016, Japanese corporation SoftBank acquired Arm for $32 billion, dealing a significant blow to Europe's technology sector. With the smartphone market's growth, the revenue generated now flows to Japan, leaving the UK and Europe without the benefits of this lucrative business. Similarly, the Finnish game development company Supercell, known for the popular game Clash of Clans, was acquired by Chinese conglomerate Tencent in 2016. In another instance, Microsoft purchased Skype, an Estonia-born company, in May 2011, further showcasing the trend of European tech firms being absorbed by non-European entities. The Dutch travel website Booking.com, for example, was purchased by the American company Priceline, now Booking Holdings, in 2005. Gillian Tans, who led Booking.com at the time, remarked that, quote, maybe if at that time there would have been more funding available, Booking would have made different choices. These examples highlight the challenges that Europe's tech industry faces due to the brain drain phenomenon and the lack of venture capital funding. As long as competition for funding favors companies from the US or Asia who possess greater resources, Europe will continue to lose ground in the global tech landscape. The complex regulatory environment in Europe poses additional challenges for tech innovation. Stringent data protection laws, such as the General Data Protection Regulation GDPR, can create hurdles for tech companies trying to develop and deploy new products and services. For example, because of this law, ChatGPT was banned in Italy, and other European countries are now considering banning the OpenAI company, effectively shutting down the magic of ChatGPT in Europe. I know these are just proposals, but personally, I find it quite insane the level of bureaucracy European countries can get. It seems like there is no limit to bureaucracy in Europe. While these regulations are designed to protect consumer privacy, they can also stifle creativity and entrepreneurship by creating barriers to entry and increasing compliance costs. For instance, tax regulations in Europe tend to be particularly stringent for tech companies. Recently, many European countries have imposed a digital services tax. More than half of the European OECD member countries are considering, proposing, or have already implemented this digital tax on large digital companies, primarily targeting US-based tech giants like Apple, Google, and Amazon. Consequently, these tech behemoths have passed the additional costs on to consumers, with Apple increasing developer fees for the App Store in the UK and Google raising advertisement fees in the same region. Bureaucracy further compounds the issue. As navigating the complex web of regulations, tax codes, and legal requirements can be time-consuming and resource-intensive for tech startups. In contrast, the United States and Asia have more streamlined regulatory processes that allow for greater flexibility and innovation in the tech sector. 
the overwhelming dominance of US and Asian tech giants in Europe has presented both challenges and opportunities for European tech companies. On one hand, the presence of companies like Google, Apple and Tencent has raised the bar for innovation, pushing European companies to think globally and compete on a larger scale. On the other hand, this dominance has made it difficult for European tech startups to gain traction and capture market share in their home countries. However, despite these challenges, there have been recent success stories in the European tech scene. For instance, Spotify, a Swedish music streaming platform, has managed to compete with giants like Apple and Amazon, emerging as a global player. Another example is Adyen, a Dutch payment processing company that went public in 2018 and has since experienced tremendous growth servicing clients like Facebook, Uber, and Netflix. Despite the challenges we have outlined in this video, these success story examples like Spotify and Adyen demonstrate the potential for growth and innovation within Europe's tech sector. Various initiatives are underway to foster innovation and growth in Europe's tech industry. The European Commission's Digital Single Market Strategy aims to remove regulatory barriers and create a unified digital market, allowing tech companies to scale more effectively. Similarly, programs like the European Innovation Council EIC, are working to provide funding and support for breakthrough innovations and disruptive technologies. The future outlook for Europe's tech sector is not entirely bleak. By addressing the aforementioned challenges of market fragmentation, investment disparities in culture, talent development and retainment, regulations, sky-high taxes, competition, and of course, heinous bureaucracy. Europe can unlock its potential for growth and innovation in the tech industry. Europe should pull itself together because Europe has already fallen behind in critical infrastructure like chips. It's a dead drop in AI and 5G, and it's slowly losing its heavy manufacturing because of the war in Ukraine. What do you think? What's causing Europe's lag in producing trillion dollar tech giants and technology innovation? Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Well, thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you with the help of these Patreon supporters and YouTube subscribers who have joined. Thanks to everyone who is supporting. Thanks for watching. Um, more interesting videos are coming up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button.